Today we have Ashley Herring Blake, Blake of Little Brown with us talking about her new book, The Mighty Heart of Sunny St. James. So, where did you, the book is middle grade or is it YA? It's middle grade. It's, it's uh, the sweet spot's like four to seventh grade, I'd say, but you know, it's really for anybody who needs it. Adults can read it too. <laughs> Could you give us a little synopsis? Yeah, absolutely. So it's about a girl named Sunny who um, has cardiomyopathy and her mother left her when she was four. So she's been living with her guardian for the past eight years. Um, and when she's 10, she's diagnosed with cardiomyopathy. And so when she's 12, she gets a heart transplant. And that's how the book opens. And then in her hospital room, her mother, who has not been in her life for eight years, shows up. And so it's really all about her navigating this new relationship with her mother, about fractured families and can they be renewed and is there redemption there and all the dynamics that play there. So it's really about complicated families. Um, she's also dealing with you know friendship issues and new crushes. Um, she's starting to work through feelings that she's having for a, a girl. So she's really just kind of trying to live her new life and this new chance she's been given with all these other complications that you know any kid deals with a lot any day. So. Well, it sounds fascinating. Now have you done other books or how many books do you have under your belt? This is my fifth published book. Um, I have three YA books with Houghton Mifflin, and then I have a, another middle grade that came out in 2018 called Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World. Very cool. Now, I understand you live in Nashville, which, uh, I mean, I would think that Austin with the lots of music in Nashville would be kind of like sister cities, um, so you must be comfortable here. Uh, how did you get into doing children's books? Um, yeah, that's a good question because... You know, we all grew up reading some sort of children's books, right? Um, but I really got into reading middle grade books when I was about 27. Um, I was living in Princeton, New Jersey. I was newly married, and I remember I picked up this book called The Canning Season by Polly Horvath. And it's a wonderful book. You should read it if you haven't read it. Um, and I just fell in love with that age and just the, the tenderness of it, but the way that, you know, that author and so many authors are able to deal with these really difficult issues that kids face, but do it through a lens where they can really... Um, consume it, feel less alone, feel comforted, feel safe. Um, and so I really just fell in love with the stories, really. And then I started writing young adult as well. I loved books for teenagers as well. Um, but I always knew I wanted to come back to white, to middle grade. So that's really my, my sweet spot, I think. And do you have a background in English or what? I don't. I'm actually a teacher. I teach first grade as well. So, yeah. Yes. Shout out to first graders. I love them. Yeah. Oh, they're so fun. There's so much growth that year. It's so fun. Yeah. Are you still teaching? I am, yeah. I had to take two personal days to be here. <laughs> now, um, have you, uh, what so what in inspired you to really create, you just told us that you're, you know, interested in um, the family dynamics and that sort of thing. So did these, this first idea just come out of the blue or did you slowly evolve into it? Well, usually, like with any book, it's a slow process and just evolving into it. I usually start with kind of one nugget of an idea, and then it just kind of grows from there. So when I started this book, I knew I wanted to write a book about a girl whose mom left her when she was very young. Um, and I did, But I didn't want to leave it at that. I wanted to really explore, like, can't, and the, her mom left her because she was an alcoholic. And then she's, she's in recovery, um, and she's in recovery for the whole book. So that there's never, like, a, a back you know like a Good. that's scary. Uh, right that's kind of scary exactly so it's like a safe place to really explore something very serious that a lot of kids do deal with but in a way that I think is a little bit more potable um, but I just really wanted to explore like different kinds of families because there's just so many kinds of families out there now um, and many kind of blended families yeah, exactly so and that's kind of the conclusion Sunny comes to as well is that you know she has many people who love her it's okay yeah it's okay, it's okay. yeah mm -hmm. Um, so do you have a, any story from your childhood about a particular librarian teacher that had an enormous influence on you? Um, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't remember my librarians all that much. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I remember all the librarians I worked with now, but I do remember certain English teachers, definitely. Um, my sixth grade English teacher I remember just loving so much, and the things we did in her classroom I think really helped me develop a love of reading and writing. Um, and I do, you know, I, I have, I can picture every library and every school, so I know I spent a lot of time there, um, but I was also a very self-driven reader, so I was, you know, able to find what I wanted most of the time on my own. But I have a lot of memories of just English class and writing and reading and just, you know, great school experiences around words. 
Oh, that sounds wonderful. Um, now, what are you working on now? I'm working on my third middle grade that will be with Little Brown. It will should come out in the fall of 2020. So it's... Um, Can you give us a hint? <laughs> well, it's still in the process, you know, and so it's like it's, it, so much changes as I'm drafting books. But um, it's basically about, it's about two girls. Um, there's two point of views in this book. So about two 13-year-old girls, um, and one is dealing with the loss of a parent, and the other one is dealing with the loss of a parent from divorce, um, and also because he, her, her father was verbally abusive. So, um, but it's also again that safe space to explore that because he's not. It's not still happening, you know. So, um, but you know, there's trauma there. So, you know, so it's about two girls who are unlikely candidates for a new family. But sounds fascinating and challenging to write. Um, so. Tell me, you just told me that you read a lot of books, a very eclectic kind of uh, reading style. If there was one illustrator or one writer in the world, alive or dead, that you could meet, um, who would that be? Do you have a hero? Oh, wow, that's a hard question. Um, you know, I, kind of that author I already mentioned, I would love to meet Ho Polly Horvath. Um, she's a, I think she's a Canadian author. But she's, you know, published here, and that book I mentioned, The Canning Season, won the National Book Award that year. She put it out. Um, so and you she, have good taste. Yes, and she's just, I think she's one of those writers who made me think, you know, there's just a, a handful of writers that I read during that really formative time when I was thinking of writing that she made me think, I really want to do this. Um, so it would uh, be great to meet her and be like, hey, you helped me become a writer. <laughs> super inspired me. Well, um, so you're having a good TLA. I am. I've had an awesome time. Met lots of amazing librarians. Thank you for all the work you do. Um, and yeah, we've had a, a blast. Well, let's say goodbye then to uh, TLA. Bye, TLA. Thank you, guys.